Hi YouTube, it's Jake Chasen here, and today I'll be giving you an in-depth preview of Apple's new Mac OS X, Yosemite. An interesting fact is that I just hiked to the top of Half Dome only two days ago, the day before this was released. Alright, so let's jump in. So first of all, I'm going to go to the Apple logo and go to About This Mac. We'll see the new system profiler. As you can see here, this is OS X, 10.10. All right, so from the system profiler, you can see the specs of the beta machine that I'm using. This machine has 16 gigabytes of RAM, and it has a 2.66 gigahertz processor. It has an NVIDIA GeForce 320 graphics card, and you can see in the displays here, it has a uh, display. This is actually wrong. It's 1920 by 1080, and uh, this is not 20.5 inch. This is actually a 24 inch display. The storage, you can see, has two solid state drives. One of them is running a stable operating system and one is running the new beta Yosemite. You can see the memory right here on the next one. You can see it's eight and eight gigabytes. You can see the support and the service screens. You can also see the new user interface, how it is a much flatter design than the previous Mavericks that was uh, its predecessor. So next we'll go to Launchpad. So from Launchpad, you can see it's much more like iOS 7 than Mavericks was. I mean, if we jump into the folders, it opens uh, like more of a zoom effect than the traditional iOS folder effect. And if we'll escape out of the folder, we can see that some of the icons have actually been redone for the system. And there's a nice search box up here that was added, I believe, in Mountain Lion. So without further ado, let's check out some of the features. So let's check out the calculator first. So, although the icon has gotten a major refresh, it doesn't seem, at least in this build, that the calculator has. We still have the older looking buttons. We have the newer looking user interface on the top, but definitely uh, not an overhauled UI for the calculator. So next, let's jump into Safari. So Safari has changed quite a bit since the last version. As if we go to Safari and about Safari, we can definitely see this is version 8.0. And if you can see, it's a much flatter UI. There is that awesome one unified search bar at the top. And we can see the thumbnails and a Mavericks type design. And we also have a new uh, iOS 7 like share button up here. We also have the open windows right here. And we have a tab design. It's much simpler. So now we'll go to google.com. So we just go here and we can see that it loads Google. It seems to have lost that zoom effect that we had in Mavericks, but they may bring that back. They may not. And we still have the swipe to go back uh, to our tab layout right here. Go to apple.com and we'll open two different tabs. So that's Apple and here's Google. And the purpose for doing this is that we can go here and we can get that tile view. We can add a new tab by clicking here and it opens up on another tab. We can also drag a tab out just like in previous versions and we get that nice semi-transparent effect and it opens into its own window. We have a new search bar in this version of Safari that links into that new spotlight, the new search functionality. So this is dramatically different. So let's search something like Apple. So here's the top hit, text edit. I don't understand why text edit is the top hit, but there is a suggested website. There are things that I've seen before. There are fonts. There's a contact card. Um, you can open these things. And the other thing is, this reminds me a lot of that old Sherlock app that Apple used to write. And that app would connect to the internet, and it would look through your files, and it would really do a great job of getting the information you needed before there were such big, powerful search engines like Google. But really, Apple's taken on Google here with this, as it can search your files, but it can also search the internet. As you have this suggested website, and straight from here, you can click on this logo, and we get straight to Safari. So next we get into the new redesigned mail. As you can see while this is opening, we definitely have a new font and new color background for here. And it is definitely a refresh. The last time that mail has seen a major refresh is actually in Mac OS X Lion. So we can add an account, and then definitely we get some nice new UI. We have a search box, and we have some nice menus. The menus look almost like they used to. Nothing has changed there, except everything is a little bit square. Uh, the other thing is there's a nice transparency effect, which was, if you take a quick look at older versions of Mac, you can see transparency, but they've really made it a lot more like iOS 7. So they've brought the transparency through, less white, more background. So next, we'll open contacts. So in this redesigned contact, you can see that 
we have this semi-transparent iOS 7 look with the new flat icons. Uh, we have this new icon right here which lets you email it. You can airdrop the card and you can do more options from here. You can go to system preferences and there are other sharing menus you can have. But no new features have been added to contacts to my knowledge. Next we have calendar. So in the calendar view you can see that it kind of looks like Mavericks but we have definitely a flatter UI. Everything's a little bit more square. We still have that scroll to the next month effect that we saw in Mavericks. Next we have notes. Notes definitely took on an iOS 7 uh, viewpoint. If you can see if I type right here you get the message body and you get a little description but if you type too much you can see that it truncates it and it puts three dots where it was. You can also share it uh, similar to other Macs that nice transparency effect um, to other things in the system and iCloud as well. In the new version of Reminders, we definitely get a more iOS 7 viewpoint. Uh, the old version that shipped with Mavericks definitely had that iOS 5 look, and now it is more transparent, and it kind of fits with more of the new Apple design scheme. With the Maps up, we definitely got a little bit more detailed icon. We have a little 3D logo. Um, but as far as the Maps, I have not seen if there is any new features that have been added, but definitely some transparency effects. Definitely you can see in this uh, pop-up that the OK buttons and dialog boxes have changed a little bit. If we go to question mark just to show you. The Mac help uh, definitely got a little bit updated user interface and um, but still has the basic features that the previous version had. The scrolling in this version seems a tiny bit buggy so I'm going to switch to a different mouse. But we have that share which you can print to. We have things that are new and we have a back and a forward button. So basically, you definitely get these privacy settings. We have a new redesigned icon set and things like that. But uh, you can see a satellite view, similar to you can in Mavericks. And they've really, it looks like that they've, they've done a nice job refining it. Messages. We saw a big improvement in messages with the new iOS 8 and Mac OS 10 Yosemite. The new version of messages it synchronizes messages that are not necessarily Apple, which is your traditional SMS and MMS and it also synchronizes iMessages. Things that you can send out can come from one phone and you can also receive them from one phone even though you may have multiple Macs and you may have multiple iPads and multiple iPods and things like that. So they really did a good job synchronizing the iCloud to bring it so you really have your desktop, your messages anywhere. So in the new version of FaceTime we definitely got a new logo and as you can see there's no camera connected to this system. Um, but we definitely have transparency effects. In the old version of uh, FaceTime, we did have a little bit of transparency here. What has been added in this new operating system is kind of that Gaussian blur that's on top of the transparency. So now I'm going to demonstrate preview. So preview, you can't really demonstrate without a PDF. So we'll go into the download stack, and we'll click on the About Downloads button, and it'll open in the new preview. So we definitely have a new updated icon, which hasn't been updated uh, for many years. And you can see that we have a much flatter user interface here. Um, we have a new search bar, we have a rotate, and here are your tools that you can add. So we'll rotate that document. And you can see it can't be edited because it's locked. You can also you know, highlight some things. You can write a signature if you have a trackpad. You can scan one in if you have a camera or a photo of it. You can add text. These annotation features have been in there for a while. You can also share it using mail, messages, or AirDrop. With AirDrop, you can also share it to any iOS device that's nearby. It's definitely a more refined user interface. Here's a good demonstration. So the old version of Mac had different icons and different fonts. This is that new Helvetica thin font. So if we go to here, well, expand this, you can see that we definitely have new colors, and it fades down. See that fade effect right there? You can create new folders, delete copies, just like you used to. And next, we have System Preferences. So, in System Preferences, you can see that the icon right here, which is actually Leopard, has not changed. I'm hoping that they'll make that the Yosemite background. They may want to make the dock icon and the mission control icon more colorful. They are known to change the icons from the developer previews to the final build, as right now they seem as though uh, they need a little bit more color to make them in tune with the rest of the icons. But, let's go through. So in the general pane, we have what we used to have. We have the appearance. We can go to graphite. We can go to blue. We can switch that back and forth. And we have graphite look now. 
And we have the default web browser, and we have things like that. And desktop and screensaver. Let's see what new photos we have here. Okay, so so far I have not seen any new photos. And the displays. You can see this new icon for the screens. This was introduced in the latest build of Mavericks, but it really updated the icon that used to show for a generic display that was connected to a Mac. As you can see, there's a little small mistake because this is running a 1080p monitor and it failed to recognize that in the system profiler, but I'm sure that'll be fixed. With extensions, you can see all these customizations, and it's really nice because it gives you an easy way that you can kind of hold all of the customizations you make to your Mac and you can monitor them, you can check them, you can you know, delete them, really easy to use. For a further demonstration, what the new finder looks like. So we definitely have this transparent effect, and if we move it over the mountain half dome, you can definitely see the color changes ever so slightly. If we go to the iCloud drive, right here we can see we can add a new folder. You can see all my files. You can airdrop with any computer that's near. You can airdrop with older Macs. You can airdrop with iOS, running iOS 8 and greater, and things like that. The applications, you can see the new icons. Let's run through a couple of these that we haven't gotten to yet. Like the new Game Center. We definitely have a more refined user interface in this version of Game Center. So I'll go ahead and log in. And we definitely have this iOS 7 bubbles moving around, hovering type look. Here's the new Mission Control. Okay, so to properly demonstrate Mission Control, I'm going to open up a bunch of apps. Alright, let's go to Mission Control and see what this looks like. Okay, so we definitely have a blurred effect here with a line depicting the different spaces. Right now we have one desktop, we can add another desktop here. We can drag windows between the desktops just like we had previously done. and We can go back and forth using the function keys. We can swap desktops just as we had previously done. And we can also close desktops and it readjusts. So your shared devices are still there, you still have your tags, you still have your finder tabs. The one thing that I do not see in this build is a way to separate these tabs into their own version of Finder, nor do I see a way to make Finder go full screen. And last but not least, let's check out the new Notification Center. So they got rid of that Mist tab. I don't know if it was on the Mac, but it is no longer on any of their devices. You can see that it no longer pushes the entire view out. It just kind of slides in with that new Gaussian blur right over the mountain. You can see the weather. You can see the stocks. You have little tiny widgets right here. And you can see the notifications as well as today. And if you go to Too New, you can see what they are. And you can see the new items. So definitely it pushes it a little bit over the screen. Definitely covers the dock. So be aware you will not be able to use the dock while this is open. But with one click, it all slides away. All right, YouTube, thank you for watching this video of the in-depth review of Mac OS X Yosemite. This is Jake Chazen, and I'm signing off.